Hello to episode nine of Earth Star Talk with Claudia Granger. And my guest today is Kelly Kessler of DivinePathways.love. She works in emotion code and body code. And I welcome you and please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Okay. Hi, Claudia. So um, I guess uh, how I'll start is just by saying that I was born, um, I would I would describe myself as a seeker, you know, I was kind of born that way. And just looking for the bit, the answers to the bigger questions in life, like, who am I? What am I? Where am I going? Uh, what am I doing here? All of those, those questions, uh, normal, mundane things didn't really resonate for me, I could sense that there was a, a deeper purpose and a deeper meaning to life. And so I, I wanted to figure that out. And I think that the, the first way that I connected to the spiritual world was um, in nature. And I had this big fir tree outside my bedroom window and I would pull up the blinds and communicate with it. We, I would have conversations and there was a, a dialogue, definitely. It wasn't like I was talking to a wall or something. I was having communication with this tree and that made me really understand that I was connected to everything in the world. And so when I moved into my teenage years, I started to self-destruct a little bit. Um, I had some trauma as a child and that um, along with these existential questions that I, I didn't have an answer to at that point, um, really, were made me kind of restless in the world and um like i said i i was doing things that weren't serving me as a as a teenager and then i I, all as a teenager (laughs) (laughs) yeah it was pretty extreme um but it was just part of my path it really taught me a lot and um, i actually became a mom when i was 15 years old and excuse me that completely changed my whole life I, this love I had for my daughter really motivated me to want to heal and change instead of run away and numb, you know, from all the things that I had been through and all of these unanswered questions I had. So, excuse me, I started on this spiritual journey um, when I was 15 and started reading books and going to workshops and you know, it, it definitely wasn't easy, especially at first uh, on that path, but I, I just always knew there was so much more going on in the world. And little by little, I started to, like they say, peel the onion and um, figure out who I was beneath all of the, the pain that I, was, that I experienced. And so more and more over the years, I, I became in contact with that part of myself that you know, that, that was, that couldn't be hurt and that was full of, um, love and that, you know, was never injured really. So, um, I got to a point where I had done a lot of work on myself and I really wanted to help other people. I, I had received so much help in my life and I was able to resonate, um, with the spiritual world in a way that I didn't think was possible, you know, when I was 15. So the, the first way that I did that was in my career. And I kind of used death as a doorway into spiritual development. And the, I, wait, 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 you said you use death as a doorway to your spiritual development. How does that? (laughs) Yeah. So I think the, the concept of death and just the, it's the it's a big mystery to a lot of us you know just trying and my drive to figure death out really um drove a lot of my you know what I was doing in in my life because I felt like if I could answer those questions about death that the all those questions that I've had my whole life would be answered you know because that's bad yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) So I, I worked in assisted living communities and, and was around death a lot. You know, people were passing away and I was, I was present for that. And it was really a sacred experience to be there when somebody passed away. And it was similar to being there when somebody 
you know, I was born. It was just the presence of divine was undeniable. And then most recently, I, uh, I just quit my job in June. I worked in the cemetery and funeral home industry and for seven and a half years. And during my time there, I really uh, cultivated a lot of skill, spiritual skills that I wasn't planning to. I know that when I first started in my role there that I, want, I when somebody's in pain, I think it's human nature to want to fix it and to make it better. Right. And I learned, I learned very quickly that, that my spiritual work in that role was to do nothing. And, you know, obviously I had a job to do and I had processes I had to go through, but my role with other people was to hold space for them and just to be there and allow them to be where they are. And I think that people, even when they're going through grief, they kind of feel pressured not to feel a certain way because they don't want to displease people around them or it's really interesting. So oh, true. I, I yeah. That too. yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. So during my years in that, in that role, cultivating just the ability to be in that place of love and whatever's going on is okay, has really, you know, is really, I think a really important skill for people to learn just the ability to do nothing. You know, it's, it sounds funny, but no, that's... not funny at all to be still, you know, that's yeah. meditation often doesn't work because we cannot be still. We cannot let it be. We always have to yeah. do, make something, think something. So yeah. that is really true. Yeah, it, it is for sure. So, um, and then I, in the last few years, I've, I've, uh, started to, uh, well, I was certified in the emotion code and body code recently in the last year or so. And then I also am a seer from blueprint practitioner and teacher. That's a form of energy healing. Excuse me when I'm interrupting here because yeah. you're already uh, venturing in a totally different field. I want to come back to this um, work at the funeral home. Oh, sure. There. Did you ever see ghosts? I have I did. questions. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you know, I, over the, my time there, I did develop the ability to see spirits. Um, I, and sense people in the room, there's a very distinct feeling, you know, where the press air pressure in the room drops and all kinds of things. But mostly I, I, I worked at, I was present at graveside services a lot, almost every single day. Uh -huh. And the deceased was there almost every single time. And well, listen up, folks, what you said is important. When you're at the funeral of a loved one, the deceased one is still present. Excuse me if I'm erupting here, but because I think that's very important to understand. As I'm a medium, I work a lot with people who want to contact their pastoral loved ones. And I found, and I just want to interject this here, that um, people contact and say goodbye after the death about a week where people have dreams or feel the presence or see a loved one sitting with them, uh, you know, in their desperation on a sofa or bed or whatnot. And then one week after the funeral, they will be still present. And then comes a time when there's nothing. So please, folks, that doesn't mean that your uh, crossed over loved ones have dropped you like a hot potato. No, it's just that they have to look upwards and not um, be you know, engaged here anymore for a while. Later, they can come back. But exactly like what Kelly said, I can only confirm that crossed over loved ones attend their own funerals. So be nice at the funerals, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, please continue. I didn't want to disrupt you. I just wanted to interject a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. Um, it's it's definitely something that that happens for sure. And yes, we we attend our own funerals. It's true. <laughs> do you so, do you ever consciously talk to a spirit that way? I mean, you t told me that you talk about you know to trees, so you felt the presence and you had mental communications there. Did you ever do that with uh, ghosts, not ghosts is wrong word, spirits of the crossed over loved ones too? So not with 
with families I worked with in my own personal life, I've had uh, some dialogue. Most it's energetically, not actually out loud. Probably, I don't know if that's how you uh, connect. Um, I, I, I feel like that that skill in me could definitely be cultivated more. I haven't really focused a lot on it. I know that sounds strange because I, I really want to connect with the other side, but that isn't something that I feel um, like I'm that I'm really good at at this point. But I definitely have had that dialogue with with people that have crossed over for sure, mostly just with my energy. Well. Um... I remember in my early years in America, uh, working at a center and doing readings. One day, a gentleman came through the door and he had a whole armada um, of spirits with him. And I said, oh my goodness, what does he do? And then he sat down and said, yeah, I know, I know. I'm a funeral director and I'm also doing side jobs with embalming and this and that. I know, I have a lot with me. <laughs> so he was totally aware. And he said, I love them all. It's just not... Oh. Don't be scared, you know, it can be a little bit overwhelming in my presence because his love was emanating and so spirit were naturally drawn to him and wanted, you know, when they were afraid to move on higher up, uh, loved the delight of his presence. And I'm sure that you were such a light too where spirits were uh, drawn to naturally uh, because uh, I know the work you're doing, which we are now going into next you know, is also a representation of that love and that light. So tell us a little bit about what you then started. You said something about body code and emotion code. Can you get yeah. into that? So um, I, I became certified in the emotion code and body code. And it really represents kind of who I am as a person because my life path has really been about transforming and um understanding who I am without all the stuff in the way. And these tools, the body code and emotion code. So the emotion code is kind of the first step and the body code actually includes the emotion code. So the body code is the, the deeper uh, tool that, that I use. So- How does that work? What is it? Can you tell us a little bit about it? I don't think that everybody who used this yeah, what that emotion code and body code is. So yeah, a little bit about that. Sure. So the the way that it works is I use a pendulum in order to tap into somebody's energy, or if they're present, you know, it just happens, and it helps to access uh, the subconscious mind. And oftentimes, things are in our way that a lot of times actually that we aren't conscious of. So this, this modality helps to access that and it, it, things can be removed that, that you know, we've been working on in therapy for 10 years in one session. Wow. Not, yeah, it's really amazing because we, we can go and talk about what's going on for us for years and not really understand the root of it. But this, going through this process with the, with the, it's actually an app, an application that's used now. It used to be on paper, but to, to find out what's going on spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, whatever's in the way and your subconscious mind with the permission to figure it out is willing to release it. So it's once it's moved out of the way, people can, it, it's really truly miraculous. The things that I've seen and just one or two sessions. I mean, it's uh, sometimes it takes longer than that, but oftentimes it's very quick. And the reason for that is because of the ability to get to the root of what's going on. Uh, isn't there also something where you do something with a magnet on your head? Yeah, so that's part of the- uh, As a representative of the one who should be doing it and you represent, you connect somehow with that energy field and you are doing it kind of sort of for them. Is that how that yeah. works? Yeah, so I, a lot of my sessions, especially right now, I'm doing on Zoom. And when I connect in energetically with a person, I'm acting as their surrogate. And I use uh, like a magnet, like I have two of them here that I run on my, on my head right here and act as them. So, and this is how the, the block is removed by using a magnet. And then 
the removal on my energy is actually in place of that. Okay. Um, I, of course, know a little bit about the emotion code. Yeah. And, uh, the body code. So um, I do it on myself uh, sometimes, even though I'm not a practitioner uh, and didn't study in detail about these things. But intuitively, I know it works. So sometimes I uh, say to myself, here is I'm uh, allowing myself to let go of X, Y, Z. And I'm not even using a magnet. I'm using just my fingertips and go back. And even thinking about that, I'm getting already a shiver. When I'm starting to end up at my neck, I know yeah. charge was sitting verbally in, or proverbially in my neck, you know, what was uh, blocked there. So when I do that, I access the central meridian, which is, you know, going then later through in, um, in like a nest of a tree through the whole body. So I'm accessing the whole body structure on several layers by yeah. doing this magnetic work. And I think you, when you do that, you're tapping into the energy field of the other. And as you said, surrogate doing it. Awesome. Yeah. So what have been the most uh, predominant themes you have been working on so far in your career doing body and emotion code? What just always reoccurring where you say, wow, this is a pattern in people right now. What's happening right now on that field? So what I'm seeing most of actually is people feeling like they're cursed or that they're, um, they're somebody has a spell on them of some sort. So I'm see, I mean, I would say 50% of the people that I'm working, and I don't, I, I mean, that's not how I advertise, you know, but it, it is, it is very, it's common right now. So, yeah. and there are, you know, parts of the system that help with that. And it's, it's really effective. So, yeah. Um, well, our beliefs have definitely a lot to do with it. And if we cannot explain why certain negative things happen to us, of course, it's easy to do, uh, you know, like a blame shame game, like somebody did something on us. And sometimes it's true. I mean, any ill wish, any negative thought can do something if we think negative about a person in the morphogenetic field, which everything exists as interconnected and that's also the field you're working with uh, then a simple thought can create form so yeah we might name it as curse but yes negative thought forms can be very devastating i always tell my clients you know check your intentions also towards yourself what are you really thinking in every given moment in time being very aware very conscious and sometimes there's a lot of negativity in the world and i would totally agree right now is one of those times Absolutely, for sure. Uh, but coming back to um, your own personal spirit connection, you were talking already about, you know, working in a funeral home scenario uh, or at grave sites and um, communicating with the tree spirits, the dryads. So um, what do you do for your own well-being? Do you do prayer? Do you do ceremony? Do you channel your spirit guides? What do you do for your own balancing? So I meditate every day for at least 30 minutes. And that really is life-changing um, meditation. And the when I'm doing a session, I am so in the presence of spirit. I mean, it's, I move myself out of the way. And so I just feel my connection so strongly at that time. And I also do a lot of journaling. I'm, I'm a big writer. I always have been. So that, that's really the, and the, the pendulum too. I use that quite often, not just in sessions, but in my, in my own life as a, you know, a way to guide me. So, yeah. Wonderful. Um, did you by any chance in your meditation get any information uh, for the upcoming times, anything we, we should aware or be aware of anything like that? You know, sometimes so, you're getting <laughs> infos in the spare of a moment and it's like, ooh, I didn't expect Yeah. That. So it really feels to me like the world is in the midst of a healing crisis, you know, where everything is intensified and accelerated right now. 
So I think it's more important than ever for those of us on a spiritual path to be aligned and clear. And so there's two, two things that I've kind of been focusing on based on the guidance that I've received. And one of the things, you know, there, I guess the other thing I wanted to say is people have such strong convictions right now about what's right and what's wrong you know, for them and for everybody else, that it almost feels violent, you know, it feels so intense. So what, what I feel like is really useful right now is to really take a step back from all of it and to look at what's going on from a spiritual perspective and understand that there is a spiritual purpose for all of this. And in addition to that, that there's a reason that we're here. We're here for a reason and that we can use what's happening outside of us as a way to uplift the consciousness of humanity instead of contributing to all the fear, division, and chaos that is so strong right now. Very so. well said, I'm getting chills. So that was very important, thank you. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you have um, for our viewers how to step back and not getting swept up in the wave of drama and chaos, uh, chaos and blame shame gaming you are wrong and i'm right and you're yeah. standing on the wrong side of the fence and i know better than you and all that which is easy as a human to be swept in with that wave of righteousness so yeah. um is it meditation or do you have any other tools which you could to tell the listeners uh, what you recommend? So I think that using our mind as a tool um, for to uplift our own consciousness is really key right now because our minds can kind of take us for a ride, you know, and, and be full of fear and, and things that are happening externally. But if we are intentional with our thoughts and use our minds as a tool to um for good and the way that i do that is by asking questions and one of the most powerful questions that i think there is to ask is what do i want more of so i've been using that question for myself and the answer lately has been peace so with that answer i go into a meditative state because that's how we access our subconscious mind and can change our brain chemistry and our nervous system. And most importantly, our reactions and our awake life. So um, in that state, I will um, put myself into situations, you know, visualizing situations that might cause me unease or trigger me in some way and practice being at peace in my mind before I go out into the world and, you know, practicing that is essential and then as i go out into the world i use that intention to align my thoughts behaviors and actions towards the light towards what i want instead of what i don't want it's so easy to focus on what we don't want to happen yeah so just being really intentional with okay this is the theme i want i want peace in my life and then taking steps to cultivate that i think you know, it's easy to say that, but then if we sit in front of the news all day saying we want peace, it doesn't really align, <laughs> you know? So okay. we have to, we have to, right now more than ever, I think we have to, we have to walk the walk. We have to be the, like, you know, I think it was Gandhi, be the change <laughs> you wish to see in the world. Right. So yeah. uh, to, to sum that up for our viewers, um, so you are asking yourself, step one, you're asking yourself, what do I want to have more of? Mm. Name your theme, let's say more love, more connections, more relationships, more money, maybe even more this, more this. And then, um, but please don't ever say I need more of this because then the subconscious says, oh, you want to experience more need? We will give you that more need. <laughs> so not that, but more like I love more of that. And then um, that was number one. And then number two, you're going into a brief meditation in that relaxed state where you then practice aggravational possibilities and practice to be at ease and not judgmental or not triggered 
and then go out into the world as step three and see whether that practice has been holding and you are not getting triggered anymore. Is that correct? Yeah, it's perfect. Good. Um, what I'm also practicing myself is not to judge myself and others, to just say, who am I to judge anybody? Yeah. And that way to climb up the pyramid of duality into the oneness point. Um, that's my method, but I think yours is very good with a practice to do in within because the outside is the mirror of the inside. Very cool. Um, any extraordinary spiritual experiences you would like to share? So I would like to share about the, the place I go that provides me with the most connection to my spirit. And I know you know me, you might be thinking I'm going to say Sedona, but that's actually not true. <laughs> um, I, so it just starts with a little story. I, I was very close to my grandmother who passed away 16 years ago. And she grew up on a lake that is about 20 miles from where I live right now. And when she was five years old, her father planted a circle of eight fir trees. And the intention was for her to get married there. That was her dad's intention. And then when she was 12, he passed, her dad passed away. And this was one of the most painful things in my grandmother's life. I, like I said, I was very close to her and she never talked about her dad ever. I found out all about the story after she actually passed away. So, um, so she actually did not get married in the circle of trees because of the pain that 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 the memory caused her uh, when she was when her mother died in, in 1970 and then they sold this property to the county and now it's a it's a place where people go and swim and camp and things like that so um in the past eight to ten years i have i mean I have such an, an, an amazing connection to this land. And I go to the circle of trees that my great grandfather planted. And my connection to the spirit world is intensified many times. I am able, I journal in the circle of trees often and I'm able to channel, I mean, I write stuff that I did not, I do not know those things. <laughs> like there's no way I come up with the, you know, just like, oh, Whoa, oh my gosh, what is happening to me? But it's amazing the, the, you know, the channels that open when I'm in that space. So I think that, you know, it, there are so many things that give us access to our spiritual side. And that for me, going to the lake, and I go at least once a week, sometimes more, to um, have that experience. And also, I just wanted to mention that I actually did get married in that circle of trees. Um, in October. Yeah, and that was meant to be, I think, your grandfather's here. <laughs> it was, it really, truly was the most spiritual experience. It's so hard to explain what happened, but it was pouring down rain. It was thunder and lightning, which sounds like that it would be undesirable, but it made it even more magical. And there were, there were just a few people at, at the wedding and everybody in that circle was overwhelmed by the presence of our ancestors there i mean it was it was hard to breathe it was just so intense it was, you know everybody was tearing up and um it felt like a kind of a rite of passage or something like the the circle was closed because that you know i'm i'm the great granddaughter of the man who planted the trees and it was just it truly was incredible uh i'm so glad i was able to do that so well we can see that an intent of love from the great grandfather who planted the trees definitely was carrying through and the yeah. trees normally trees like here in sedona they can grow into a circle and you have like a little mini vortex but i think the intent of your great grandfather the intent of love and planting a circle i mean who as a man plants a circle of trees? I know, right? Think about that too. I mean, that means your grandfather had some kind of connection going on. Otherwise, I don't think he would never have an idea like that. Yeah. So to, to have that maybe a previous uh, lifetime as a druid or such. And then the trees themselves, 
which are normally growing on a ley line or energy line or you know crisscross of ley lines creating these circles they are aware and willing to work with humans but this intentionally planted normally planted trees don't do that if they're not on a ley line forget about it it's better to work with trees than you work with trees on a ley line but this intention your great grandfather was setting i think that's did it to awaken or let the tree spirit say okay let's work with humans let's assist them in channeling let's assist them in this uh wonderful story thank you so much for sharing yeah thank you so um let's talk a little bit before we round it up about your practice um, what is the best way to contact you? I have here this uh, divine pathways love. Is that the best way to contact? Should it be by phone? What should we put down there in the description box for people to be able to contact you if they would like to have a session with you? Yeah, so that's the best way to contact me is on my website, divinepathways.love. There's a contact form. So if you want to send me a message or ask any questions, that's the best way to do it. And then also you can set up an appointment directly on there as well. Wonderful. Um, one more last thing. So what in the general sense in a day gets you out of bed? I know you ch you're, uh, changed your job and you're now self-employed. And that's a risk for many people, especially in COVID. A lot of people last year reinvented themselves. And yeah. I'm not case with, do I do that what my heart desires or not? So what does, what did make the decision for you? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Yeah, so, I mean, I think I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude to be at this place in my life where I can, I have these tools and I have this guidance in place where I can serve people, you know, and provide a service that to me is very useful and it's life-changing. So that really gets me out of bed. I, I'm learning so much every day and connecting with people that are beautiful and on, on the path. And I really appreciate that, you know, being around people that want to get better and to evolve. And really what that means is to remember who they really are, because we just sometimes have things in the way. And it's, an, it's just the pleasure of my life to be able to help with that. So you never regret it then you never look back <laughs> i mean there's a uh, some of that goes on but i i think that i have i have tools to help me with that and i have an, ama an amazing husband and adult children now that really support me like they really want they see how much joy this work brings me and how much you know it just is is it would be pretty amazing if it didn't work out considering all the support i have both spiritually and in my actual life so i i don't regret it at all <laughs> wonderful to hear yeah. i'm excited that you are on the planet to do this work and uh took the call and courage to do what you're meant to do here on planet earth and I encourage anybody um, who listens to this and is a little bit hesitant about uh, making a big leap forward and going into spiritual practice work, coming from a totally different area of work, to uh, say, yes, do it, stand up to your truth, and write the divine into your daily life and just work it. So yeah. thank you so much, Kelly, for coming. And it was my pleasure to interview you today. You're definitely a gift to the world. Thank you so much, Claudia. It's really just a joy to be with you. I, I just love you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.